I'm here with UFC President Dana White. Um, Nico Montano earlier today goes to hospital. That fight gets scratched. Uh, Valentina Shevchenko yesterday predicted this was going to happen. She keeps talking about how uh, she doesn't think Nico Montano wants to fight her. Is there any consideration for either stripping the title or creating an interim title now? Well, yeah. Well, what happens now is the title becomes vacant. The title is now vacant. So uh, Valentina has been dying to fight for this title. So we're in the process right now of setting up a new fight. Is there an opponent you have in mind? There is. There is an opponent we have in mind. We're talking to that opponent right now, so we'll see what happens. Is her name Caitlin Chukagian? It's not. <laughs> it is not. All right. Well, she's in Dallas, so I just thought I'd throw something at the wall. Uh, uh, she's, a, <laughs> she's definitely, you know, one of the people uh, that is definitely, uh, you know, in line. That seems like this kind of thing is a recurring theme, as Yair Rodriguez, unfortunately, unable to make it with Zabit. How hard is it going to be to get this guy top five, top ten ranked guys. It's impossible for these guys to move up in the rankings when nobody wants to fight them. Brandon Davis stepping up on short notice. Yeah, well, this this is pretty much a place where if you don't fight, the, you know, you know what happens when you don't fight. The, the, we're looking for the best in the world who want to face the best in the world and become world champions. Um, if we end up finding out some way that you're not that person, more than likely you end up going somewhere else. So what's happening with Yari Rodriguez, his status? Is he still on the UFC roster? Yeah, he is. He is. Uh, and we'll get that figured out. Uh, UFC 230 is coming up. Tickets are on sale, I believe, it's next week. Um, is, a, is there a main event that's going to be announced sometime soon? There is. It'll, it'll be announced soon. Is, it, uh, is this thing that we're not going to expect? Because when you look at the different titles that, I guess, are available, um, there just isn't a whole lot at, in play right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, we got a full roster. And uh, we'll... we'll uh, We'll figure it out, though. We always do. Connor and Khabib in a month. It, it seems like Connor's continues to build the appetite of people who just want to hear him speak, get out there and do something. Is there anything planned in terms of promotion for this fight? Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a couple press conferences. Uh, that'll all be announced after this fight. We're going to get through this fight, and then we'll, we'll announce all the stuff that's going on with Connor and Khabib. When you say a couple press conferences, are we talking something similar to what happened with Mayweather and McGregor? No, no, nothing like that. There won't be any. We should have, but there isn't enough time. You know, these guys, first of all, this is the toughest fight in both of their careers. And uh, these guys need time to train and get ready for this fight. It's a month away. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to have some good stuff for the press and for the fans. You mentioned it's a month away. It feels almost like a volcano, like the lava is just building and building and people are ready. Are, do you think when fight week hits, this is going to be just the biggest thing on earth? Yeah, I can't <laughs> believe that this thing's a month away already. Yeah, it's, and, and yes, I think it's going to, as we get closer, I mean, you start to feel the energy and you start to feel the excitement of such a great fight. And, uh, yeah, I think it's going to explode. Uh, there was a story that came out that Max Holloway and Brian Ortega were going to fight at UFC 231 in Toronto. Is that confirmed? And is Max Holloway ready to come back? Um, Max Holloway is ready to come back. And, yes, that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Would that be the main event? Um, it would be. Great. We always like having you in Toronto. And I uh, just want to thank you for your time. It's a great event. Darren Till versus uh, Tyron Woodley. Darren Till, 169 pounds, making a statement this morning. Yeah. He, he said he had the best weight cut he's ever had. You know, I've been, in, I've been in contact with him through this whole thing. He's fired up for this fight. Um, stylistically, this is a great matchup. Tyron Woodley on a six-fight win streak. Uh, the world champion, explosive, knockout power in both hands. And uh, Till is a big, strong guy that puts pressure on you, which is exactly the way you have to fight Till. I love this fight, and I can't wait for it. Does Till have that it factor, that Conor McGregor factor, that Ronda Rousey factor? It seems like he's just great promotionally. He's got all the confidence in the world, 25 years old, undefeated. Yeah, no, he's undefeated. Um, I, I like his style of fighting, and it's always fun when you have these guys who have a whole country behind them. Well, we'll see if it stays that way tomorrow night. UFC 228 in Dallas. You can catch the prelims on TSN2. Thanks, Dana. Thank you.